no, we are all vets. The right way to eat food is for a vegetarian, the principle must be right. That is to say, different types of cereals, different types of pulses, different types of vegetables, different fruits, and all milk products must be included in the diet. And therefore, we would say, if a person where if he is a vegetarian, he should take rice, he should take wheat, he should take jawar, he should take bhagra, all kinds of things. And the diet that a person has been eating from childhood onwards is his basic food. Make no change. Because the change, you find the intestines will find it difficult to prepare now a new set of enzymes to digest it. And since all of them will be more or less the same, all cereals, including rice, wheat, they all give in 100 grams roughly 62 to 68 percent stars. So it's not that by not eating rice and eating wheat, you will lose weight, nothing of that kind. You will gain and lose weight about the same everywhere. And if a person wishes to lose weight, all that is to do is to do this kind of a slowly endurance building walk. 40 minutes in the morning, 40 minutes in the evening, slowly on a plane surface. So when they say that you have dood haldi, if you have a cough or a oh, condition? You know, it's like this. Haldi does have a certain amount of antiseptic property. And uh, therefore, throat infections which are common would be benefited, no doubt. But uh, most of the times, the sore throats are either allergic in origin or viral in origin. And antiseptic drugs or medicines or antibiotics have no place. There, the only thing to do is to take rest during that period of time. And you try, if you drink hot water, that's good enough. Because by drinking hot water, those viruses or whatever it is will go into your stomach. Our stomach should have adequate acid to destroy them. But there are many, like really a lot of uh, medicinal uses of various things which are being com coming up nowadays. Of herb? Of any herb or aloe or... Uh, you know, know, most of them give... It's not exactly medicine. kind of a symptomatic relief. Huh. Uh, for example, uh, ginger, aloe. It, it, is, it, it has a carbonative action. So if you drink it with hot water or something, it may, you may feel that you digested something. It doesn't really help in digestion, but it, it allows the food to pass forward and of course the load of the stomach will become better. And taking it in a small quantity is no harm because frankly we don't need so much of medicine for putting it right every day. More than 90% of our illnesses get corrected by themselves. And we will say that whereas human beings are on this earth for, let us say, 100,000 years, most of the medicines are not more than 100 years old. So for all these years, how was the man surviving if he needed medicines for everything? No, no, no. There are very few people who are gluten intolerant. Which protein contains gluten. No other cereal has gluten. So supposing somebody does find by experience that he cannot tolerate wheat, he can shift out to any other cereal. He can take rice, he can take jawar, he can take bhagra. They don't have gluten at all. Gluten uh, gives a certain amount of adhesiveness to the, uh, to the floor. And so it's easy to prepare chapati also. Absence of gluten, like what it is there in the other cereals, it's difficult to make a chapati out of it. You can make a bigger roti or bhaskari or something. But wheat you can make a very fine chapati because of the gluten. But that, as you said, a small percentage, roughly 8 to 10 percent of people in India have gluten in the But gluten as such has no ill effect. If you are tolerant. If you are tolerant, it has no ill effect. In fact, it will something which will be which will help us to prepare the chapati, which will be more easily uh, likeable, shall we say. Protein 
supplementation is a sales gimmick. Because firstly, protein is mostly required during the growth period in a person's life. Let us say, from the time you are born till the age of 18, you want to eat protein. But if you are taking adequate amount of cereal and dals and milk particularly, then you will not need any protein supplement whatsoever. And those protein supplements are, as I said a minute ago, mostly a sales given because they may give you, the advertising makes a person do that. Like we must say, advertising is a science. Now when I was a child, I remember that there used to be a, a big advertisement of the Lux soap. Lila Chitney says she uses Lux soap. That was the saying. Lila Chitney was a well-known actress during those years. So everybody says that if Lila Chitney is using Lux and she is such a good-looking person, let me also use Lux and I will also become good-looking. This is how they make the Lux very popular. And that is where the skill of the advertiser comes. But it is not so. It's not at all necessary. So basically you should concentrate on your diet to get your... Have a balanced diet. Eat as I said everything. Eat cereals, eat pulses, take vegetables, eat fruit and consume milk. A vegetarian who doesn't consume any non-vegetarian food needs to take 350 milliliters of milk per day. In all form, means it, milk, curds, buttermilk, tea, coffee, whatever you uh, everything together, 350 milliliters. Not too much, three glasses. You take uh, curds and just uh, spin it and make it to uh, buttermilk, it's the same thing, no difference. It has the same nourishment, same nutritive value, maybe a little like water added. So milk to curd is absolutely the same. No change. Only thing is that curds will have some bacteria which milk won't have. And therefore the bacteria themselves will add some protein to the milk. But beyond that there is no difference at all. These bacteria convert the lactose into lactic acid. And therefore it might become slightly sour. And the more it stays, and more the bacteria multiply, the sour it will become. But if you take a curd which is not so sour, sweetish in taste, just right for it. Whatever fruits we think we are eating, the difference is only outside the human body, including vegetarian and non-vegetarian food, and cereals and pulses and milk and fruit. They are different food, foods, foods as far as we can see. And this is all outside in one body. Once we start chewing and it goes into our intestine and it gets converted into a kind of a easily absorbable liquid, there is no way of knowing what this person has eaten to get that. And once it gets absorbed, Supposing the food I eat and it gets absorbed, there is simply no way of knowing whether this molecule has come from chicken or has it come from a lard. So whatever differences we make of our food are outside the human body. But we have, just as we have body, we have mind, and we have religious concepts, and we have thoughts, and we may think that for our survival and for our pleasure, why should we kill other animals? And the poor will say this is not a good thing to do. Nothing good and nothing bad about it. It is there. After all, when we drink milk, milk is an animal product. But we take it because we have decided that this is good for us. And that's how things are. So there is no difference between them and combining anything, whatever you eat inside your intestine, you will all get combined. There is no such point in saying that if you mix food with milk it is bad, nothing of the kind. It's all going to get mixed in your intestines anyway. For example, our bones will need calcium which if a person were to take, as I said, 350 milliliters of milk 
you will get an excellent variety of calcium. Why what do you mean by excellent variety? Milk contains calcium, which is calcium glucuronate, which is a substance which is uh, easily absorbed from our intestinal tract. Whereas cereals and pulses also have calcium, but it is bound to oxalate, phytate and tannate and it will not be absorbed unless it is separated out. And for it to separate out, the nature has produced hydrochloric acid in our stomach. Generation of hydrochloric acid is controlled by the brain. That is to say, supposing if I have my lunch every day at one o'clock, then my brain knows that it is 12.45 now. That is, in the next 15 minutes, food might come. So it will start generating acid inside. But for some reason, I don't have meal on that day at 1 o'clock. And I have meal at 3 o'clock, let us say. Then the acid was generated, but no food came. So it, it did not uh, separate out calcium from the food because there was no food. On the contrary, it started digesting and irritating on my own digestive tracts. Our intestinal juices work only in alkaline medium. But the acid which is produced in the stomach, if for some reason it is not used for in the stomach, then the acid will go into the small intestine and will not allow the small intestinal juices to work at all because they will work only in alkaline medium. And then a person will get gas and indigestion, bloating and not found stools and all kinds of indigestion because the undigest, the unutilized acid has gone into the small intestine. The corollary is that I have food at 3 o'clock when the brain has not anticipated that. So that if I were to take a diet at unexpected period by my brain, then the brain has not sent those impulses down to produce acid. And therefore, iron and calcium and many other minerals which are there cannot be absorbed because they are not separated out. They are still bound to oxalate, tannate and fight it. They go down. That is not the case with milk. Milk is there is no oxalate and tannate and fight it. It is calcium gluconobionate which is easily separated out. And whatever time you take milk, you will get all the calcium in it, all the nutrition in it, and milk is therefore absolutely mandatory. Except those 30% of Indians who have less uh, uh, enzymes digest the uh, lactose. The lactase is not totally absent but deficient. But sometimes some infections can cause temporary absence and you may not be able to digest it. But if you convert all the milk into curds, then you are converting all the lactose into lactic acid which is digested. There is no problem. The protein will remain the same. Whether you add drinking chocolate or Ovaltine or whatever else to the milk, there is no difference in calcium. Calcium is an element. If you want to change an element, you need a nuclear gun or a machine. And it's not, it's not easy just by boiling it or by adding something, you can't change it. So, uh, then it's a wrong idea that you add something to milk and then nutritive value will go. Oh, no, no, not at all. Nutritive value will remain. Only then if you keep on adding something sweet, the sugar in that may not be good for you. That is the only thing that one has to be careful of. But supposing, let us say, a person does not like the smell or taste of milk and wants to add drinking chocolate, Ovaltine or coffee or whatever. It is not going to make uh, any of the values any less. Or some people would like to make tea out of milk. No, it has only added flavor to it. And the alternate for those who can't digest is speed oil shots. Because milk, come, because it is of animal origin, is the only part of the vegetarian diet which is beet oil. Not too much of it, but we don't need too much beet oil. 100 milliliters of milk will give you 0.8 micrograms of beet oil. 
we need between one and a half to two micrograms. That means we don't need more than 350 ml anyway. That even if you boil and convert into curds or add chocolate to it, nothing will happen. That big will remain big. Vitamin D3 is manufactured in our body from the cholesterol and it's not just underneath the skin. It gets exposed sunlight to the ultraviolet light and ultraviolet light converts that into uh, vitamin D3. Um, any time between 8 and 10 in the morning, 10 minutes of exposure is enough. And that much will do that. Of course, these days most of us are fully covered and sitting in closed rooms and therefore we are not really exposed to that. But we will say, okay, vitamin D is at present only in animal diet, like for example, fish oil. Fish oil does have vitamin D. Fish, the only reason why fish also has omega-3 fats is because uh, omega-3 fats are present in algae and fish eat algae and therefore they have that omega-3 They don't manufacture omega-3 fats. Omega-3 fats are manufactured by vegetarians who buy uh, these kind of things. Green vegetables and algae for manufacturing.